our last lesson we talked at great length about the spine chilling event that the holocaust was so many jews were losing their lives simply because of being born as jews in nazi germany hitler was persecuting the jews and the various other undesirable communities in the german society now at this point of time hitler was mad like anything to spread the anti-semitic propaganda among the masses now in this regard let me tell you something interesting here Many a times you must have heard your parents or other elders tell you that schools play a very important role in the lives of children. This is because it are the schools that introduce children to new ways of thinking, to new ways of knowing the world. Now in childhood and youth one remains much more impressionable. And if a child is fed one idea one propaganda for long then that child will be able to believe in that propaganda or that idea as the only reality as something sacrosanct this is because children or youths are not introduced to alternate ways of thinking whatever i will teach a child will be real to that child and hitler clever and shrewd as he was knew very well how to play on the psychology of the germans to his advantage he knew that he would have to begin with the roots that is to say he would have to begin with the children in the german society and to this end he knew that to infiltrate the minds of germans and fill them with the nazi ideology he needed to begin with the children as we just mentioned because children are the roots of any society children grow up into adults and they keep on believing in one set of ideology in one set of belief unless it is overturned and if a child could be fed the nazi ideology and anti-semitic propaganda in the truest sense of the term then that child would hold and revere that ideology as something sacrosanct that as something real and hitler also began with the schools with the children he knew that he would have to bring children under his control both inside and outside the schools as students many of you might be very interested to know what used to happen in schools in nazi germany now whatever happened in nazi germany was actually sanctioned by hitler that is to say if he did not sanction something that thing could not ever happen in nazi germany he was a totalitarian dictator as we have mentioned quite a few times now in the schools he had to begin with the teachers foremost because the teachers are the ones who fill the minds of the children the young impressionable minds with new ideas with new thoughts and so schools in nazi germany were cleansed of teachers who were jews or considered politically undesirable now many teachers were jews in nazi germany and these teachers were not allowed to teach in the schools because if the jews were teaching then the anti-semitic nazi propaganda would not be spread among the children and at the same time many people were also considered as politically unreliable by the nazis so the schools in nazi germany were actually cleansed and purified of all these undesirable elements and here you can see a classroom in a school in nazi germany and on this wall you can locate the swastika symbol which was the symbol of the nazi germany so can you understand to what extent the nazi germany and hitler's ideology had entered the education system during the nazi rule in germany this was what was happening in the schools but what was being taught in these schools and who were the students here let us try to find out answers to these questions 
the students were also segregated and excluded in terms of their race. German and Jewish children were not allowed to mingle. This is because the Germans were believed to be of the superior race by Hitler and the Jews were the racially inferior ones. They were the undesirable ones and so the racially superior German children were not allowed to mingle with the racially inferior Jewish children. And so all these Jewish children, the Slavs, the Gypsies or even the abnormal and unfit children were then sent off to the gas chambers. So in the gas chambers, these small children who were innocent of anything were actually being put to death. So teachers and students both were segregated and categorized in schools in Nazi Germany. Now to answer the question that what was taught in schools in Nazi Germany, we have that the schools inculcated Nazi ideology and anti-Semitism in the young minds. Because Hitler knew he had to begin with these young minds, these young minds who were impressionable, these young minds who were willing to believe anything that was being taught to them. And so the Nazi ideology that was entrenched in racism and the anti-Semitic propaganda were now being fed to these young children in the schools. At the same time, the content of the textbooks were also being rewritten and whatever was written was in alignment with Hitler's ideas, with Hitler's propaganda and ideology. And so, racial sciences were being taught to the students at this point of time. Now, what are we referring to when we talk about racial science that was taught in the schools in Nazi Germany? By this, we are actually referring to the flawed Nazi theory of race that Hitler believed in, that Hitler propagated. It was this theory of race that put the German Aryans at the top of all the races. And this idea was also filled in the minds of these young students. Now, here you can see how the facial characteristics of different races are being taught to the children. Well, this was how the Nazi ideology was at play even at the level of schools. Now, before proceeding with this lesson, let me ask you a question. Schools in Nazi Germany did not spread the Nazi ideology among children. Do you think this statement is true or false? Well, the statement is false. We have learned that Hitler decided to begin with the schools so as to infiltrate the children's minds with the Nazi ideology with the flawed theory of race and in this regard schools in Nazi Germany played a very important role in spreading the Nazi ideology among the children. Now along with the flawed theory of race children were also taught different kinds of things. Children were meant to be submissive to the Nazi propaganda. That is to say, from a very young age, all the children were to revere the Nazi propaganda, the Nazi ideology. They were to subordinate themselves to the cause of spreading the Nazi ideology. Then they were meant to be filled with hatred against the Jews. Because the Jews were the worst persecuted in Nazi Germany as we have mentioned quite a few times and since their childhood children were supposed to be filled with hatred against the Jews and they were to revere and worship Hitler as their messiah. So here we see the famous Nazi salute being performed even by children. They were to keep themselves subordinated to Hitler and his cause who was their messiah, who was the liberator of Germany. You will be surprised to know that even in young boys, the spirit of aggression and violence was bolstered. 
Now, young boys were taught to be violent and aggressive and devoid of any kind of soft sentiment. So, this was how manhood was also defined in Nazi Germany. And since a very tender age, young boys were exposed to the spirit of aggression and violence that they were supposed to imbibe. Hitler had put a lot of faith in youth organizations for the spreading of the Nazi ideology among the youths. And so, 10-year-olds had to enter the Jungvok. Now, the Jungvok was the group of Nazi youths below the age of 14. And at the age of 14, it was compulsory for all German boys to join Hitler Youth. Hitler Youth was the youth association of the Nazi party and this association was formed in 1922 and in 1926 it was renamed as the Hitler Youth and it was mandatory for all German boys to join the Hitler Youth at the age of 14. Now what were these young men in the youth organizations of the Nazi party taught to believe and revere? They were meant to worship war. War was seen as the only medium of extending the boundaries of annexing more and more territories and making one's presence felt. And so war was supposed to be worshipped by all these boys who joined the Hitler Youth. At the same time, they were to glorify aggression because aggression and violence are the prerequisites for fighting a war and so they were supposed to glorify aggression they were to condemn democracy because it did not align with the principles of the nazi party which was a far right-wing party and then they were to be filled with hatred against all the undesirables so the undesirables that included the jews the slavs the gypsies the russians the poles were supposed to be hated by these boys and so they were to be filled with aggressive nationalistic sentiments with aggressive ideas that were founded on a racial ideology so these young boys were exposed to the nazi ideology from their youth and after a prolonged ideological training, these boys were to join the labor service at the age of 18, following which they were to serve in one of the Nazi agencies. So this was how young boys voluntarily or otherwise had to join the Nazi agencies during the rule of the Nazi party in Germany. So from this, a point that we can infer is that more than violence, more than aggression, more than warfare, ideology is a better way to exploit the minds of the masses. Because when an ideology, a propaganda is fed to the masses for a long period of time, the masses will start to believe in the same. And this is what was happening in Nazi Germany. Because since my childhood, if I am continuously told that I am an Aryan and I am supposed to be at the top of all races, I will dominate all races, I will exterminate the undesirables, I will be filled with manliness, with aggression and violence. Over the years, I will actually start believing in this. And this is how Hitler had actually entered the minds of the masses. So can you understand how psychological exploitation was used as a medium, as a vehicle to spread the Nazi ideology and the anti-Semitic propaganda among the masses from their childhood? Having talked about this in our subsequent lesson, we will be focusing on the cult of motherhood in Germany. That will be a new line of discussion because here we learnt about how the youths or the German boys to be specific were exposed to the Nazi ideology. In a subsequent lesson, we will learn how women or rather mothers were treated in Nazi Germany. 
Don't forget to subscribe to our channel and hit the bell icon. You can also register for free at deltastep.com or download the Delta Step app to learn one to one with our amazing teachers or to get access to all our 5000 plus amazing videos as per your school syllabus. Master each topic with our adaptive practice technology. Get million plus questions with step by step solutions and unlimited mock tests. Get all your doubts resolved instantly. Learn via games and win amazing prizes like playstations and iPads. So at Delta Step, learning is not just fun and easy, it's rewarding too. So register for free now.